This is Scott from KIG. It's May 25th, 2016. And we're going to do a couple uh, videos for a very patient customer of ours, Mike in Arkansas, I believe it is, who's been waiting on this 50-ton uh, McQuay, uh, McQuay chiller. So this video is to start it up and show some things and uh, um, a runoff video, and there'll be several of them, but at the same time just to add some credibility uh, for Mike, who doesn't know us, um, that this is what we do. Uh, in our front uh, area here of our 13,000 square foot building right now, we have a uh, 20 ton cold shot. Uh, over here, that's a 25 ton redel. Uh, way down there in the back of the room, those are two 25 ton redels. A little 10 ton uh, air cooled indoor chiller. A um, couple, uh, couple condensers. And in the back here, for very aggressive refurb, we have this 25 ton train and a 15 and a 20 ton thermal care. Those fall into the category of uh, almost scrap machines, but we will resurrect those. Uh, in sharp contrast to those is this 2000 McQuay um, AGZ 50 ton 4 mic. Uh, that we've been working on for a, couple, a week or two, or maybe a couple weeks to try to get it just right. Uh, and as we communicated to the customer, you know, this is a, a 208 volt or 230 volt three phase unit. Um, it is the AGZ 50 2009 STNU 09, is how you tell by uh, McQuay. And it's an R410A unit. Um, so, two of the things, and we've been running it quite a bit and it chills well, but two of the things, uh, one of the problems we ran into, very small problem, was the hot gas bypass circuit on uh, circuit number two. For that, um, we found a burnt chip, um, very small chip, I think they call it a CMOS relay, something like that, within the Carroll controller. Um, and that activated a little relay on the board. So, we ordered some, and we had a guy repair it. Uh, that's the main chip there. This is a backup spare we got just in case, because they were only two bucks. Uh, that's the main one that was the culprit, and while we were at it, even though this wasn't faulty, um, or it may not have been faulty, but just to play it safe, we had the circuit board repair guy uh, replace this relay too. Uh, so that was one thing. Uh, the other is right here on one of the four compressors on that oil stabilization line. There was a very, very, very tiny leak, uh, and it was the right thing for us to fix it. So it took our de technician Dana some time, but we had to evacuate the charge or most of the charge, uh, put in some uh, additional, or put the R410A back in. Um, and when we did that and did the, the silver soldering connection there, we had to take oil out of the compressor and we put some of that back in. So when we test chillers like this, um, again, we like to make sure it's as perfect as possible. In this case here, this is our pump tank system, uh, kind of homemade, but we use it for testing. Uh, we have the tank just up to about 72 or so. I don't know, there's probably 200 gallons or 170 gallons of a glycol mix in here. And we'll probably chill this down to about uh, 45F today. And then just to give us a little bit of load, we have this uh, air handler here. Um, it's actually getting hot here in Massachusetts today. And we'll, uh, that'll give us a little bit of load once we start. So we're actually going to do it in two stages to show all four compressors running. So that means we're going to turn it on and start chilling down to, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the 55 or 60 range. And then uh, either meet set point and turn it off or manually turn it off. Um, and then uh, start it back up again. And the reason you want to start it back up again is then it's going to turn the other two compressors on on its next cycle. With the minimum, minimal load we have right now, um, it's not automatically going to... And with the algorithms and the controller, it's not automatically going to turn off all four compressors on. So Dana, could we uh, just change the set point now and get this um, starting to chill? And we do have the hard copy manual that will ship with the chiller. 
So what's the set point right now? 55. Okay, so I'm going to chill down to 55. Uh, so inside our, uh, this is the inside of our controller, we have the uh, four um, breakers for each of the four scroll compressors uh, and, the, uh, and the contactors below. So we'll be able to see, once we start chilling here, um, which contactors are drawn in. And right now, none so far. Um, these are a little bit of delay. Uh, up here we have, uh, those are two VFDs. This has low ambient options, so two of the fans uh, have VFD drives. So this can run in colder months also. And right here we have the uh, overloads for each of the four, each of the four fans, and that's your main, main contactor here. Uh, so right now, Compressor one off, two off, compressor three off, compressor four is on and cooling right now. We've got heater bands on all four of the scroll compressors. Exchanger on this now for this application here, uh, the customer should definitely put in a flow switch within their piping and bring it back uh, to the appropriate contactors on the controller terminal strip. Again, our tanks at about 70 right now, start chilling fairly quickly. And whenever we do a test, it's kind of upside down, sorry. Uh, we have our flow meter on here. And right now we're doing about just under 100, about 90 something GPM for our test. So a jumper in here for the uh, flow switch. I think it'll leaving water temperature in the evaporator right now of about 60. And our target's 55. the fans and uh, sometimes we have to rebuild fan motors and stuff these all seem uh, just fine
will ship out with your full charge of our 410A. Just waiting for the second compressor to kick in, then we'll uh, that I'll turn the video off for video number two. Because when you have such a small load, sometimes it's hit or miss whether we can uh, have the controller think it has a big enough uh, load to kick that second one on. Right now, it's looking at it and saying hey, I'm chilling fairly quickly with just the one. the video now and turn it back on after the second compressor kicks in um, just because it's getting a little uh, 